Okay, so this is the first tutorial that I'm going to start to discuss Rhino scripting. Um, this is just the visual basic stuff. We'll get into some more advanced uh, script code line, lines of code down the road, but uh, suffice to say, this is a, a good beginning benchmark. Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've installed and opened up uh, Monkey. That's a plugin for Rhino uh, that sort of assists and color codes a lot of the scripting stuff, and it also makes uh, just the interface a lot easier to deal with, so I recommend installing that. Um, the first thing we have when you open up and create a new document, you have an option explicit. Uh, that has to do with variable declaration. Um, it's necessary but not required to run the script. Um, underneath that, you have uh, Monkey does you the favor of doing some uh, pre-coding stuff if you set it up ahead of time. Um, so you can uh, basically code in who this stuff is, who it's from, who it's by. Uh, you can add additional lines to this. It doesn't matter how many lines of code there are. Um, the important thing to note here is that if you put an apostrophe, Anything that follows after the apostrophe uh, can be used for notation or can be used, it's basically ignored by the computer uh, and it's there for the programmer to, to utilize. Uh, moving down, we have the, basically we're calling our main subroutine, uh, basically calling the function into order so that we can start to engage that. And then below that, we have the main subroutine here. Uh, so if we look down below here, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to start to understand the syntax here. Uh, and so you, essentially you're dealing with a blank slate, a universe that doesn't have uh, anything defined. So you need to actually start to define the variables that are going to come into play with whatever it is you want to do. Uh, now that being said, you need to know what you want to do ahead of time. Uh, otherwise scripting is not a very useful technique or tool. Um, it's really nice at automating uh, repetitive motions or something where you need to um, uh, move a lot of data through. Uh, and so the first thing I want to do before I get uh, too far into this is acknowledge that there is help on here. Uh, if you hit press F1 while you're in Monkey, it pulls out the Rhino scripting assist. Uh, and in here is an index of every command that you can pull out of here. Um, and there are other ways to also engage the actual lines of code. In Rhino, um, that, that'll be a little bit more advanced scripting tutorial down the road. But um, suffice to say, there's plenty of ways to support uh, all everything you're doing. Um, and so the way that you actually start to create these uh, variables in the universe you're going to be uh, creating is you, start, you call them dimensioning them. Uh, so this is similar in, in thinking to uh, the, the dimensions in which you experience the world, uh, touch, smell, taste, sight. Right? Those are all dimensions of your sensory experience. Uh, you can also think about dimensions in terms of X, Y, and Z coordinates. If you start to dimension out uh, the, the blocks uh, or of geometry that you occupy in space, uh, there's a lot of different dimensions and a lot of ways that you can think about that. Uh, so we have an infinite number of dimensions that we can start to articulate when we're starting to code a script. Uh, and so I'm going to write a basic script that's just going to draw some circles. Uh, it's going to ask a user for a radius. We're going to get some information from a user, and it's also going to ask it for an origin. Uh, and then we'll look at how we can start to code some of those things. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to start to understand what variables we're going to need in order to uh, process this. So we're going to need a uh, dimension or radius, so dim radius. Uh, we're also going to need to dimension an origin in order to understand where that's at. Uh, we're going to need to dimension the actual geometry. That's going to end up being, we'll call it circle. Uh, and then we can go ahead and get started with this. Now, uh, it's important to note that when you're dimensioning variables, you can dimension them anywhere in the script. Uh, you just need to make sure that you dimension them before you actually call them. So if I uh, come in here and start using radius before I define radius, obviously I'm, I'm starting to act on something that doesn't exist yet. Uh, so it confuses the computer and uh, it is your dumbest friend. Uh, it needs you to be uh, absolutely explicit uh, about everything that you're trying to do. Uh, and so afterwards, that it works much like a sort of uh, algebra equation. We can start to define this uh, radius is going to equal uh, lino dot get real. So we're going to get a real, and if you remember some of the algebra stuff, uh, a real is any number, uh, positive or negative, and uh, from zero to essentially infinity. So we're going to, uh, the first thing, using quotations, we can create a string message that's going to prompt the user for the information we're going to want to get from them. So. Uh, what's the radius? All right, question mark. Let me close that. Let's put a comma, and we can uh, have the machine recognize that there's some regular value ahead of time. We can make that whatever real number we want it to be. 
Uh, so we'll go ahead and we can put like 3.14. And, and we just close parentheses. And you'll notice this is where monkey becomes really nice because it starts to notation, notate the edges of that. All right. Uh, define the origin. Same way. Right hand dot. Go, where's the origin? All right, and uh, we'll just go ahead and close that off. And so this is not going to, there's no preset value for this. Now, um, from that, we could basically create a circle, right? We have a point in, uh, from which to radiate from, and we can draw a circle from that. Uh, so now we need to go in and we can draw circles in a couple of different ways. If we pull up our help tool here, uh, we can look and search for the circle generating command. And I've done this ahead of time to identify that, okay, well, if this is actually going to ask us for things that we don't necessarily have. Uh, so we may have to be a little bit more clever about this uh, than necessarily we had initially thought. And so this needs uh, a plane that actually defines the origin of this guy, and then that can then be programmed in with a radius. And the world X, Y, Z plane actually is 0, 0, 0 is the origin of that. So it'll draw, right now, this code, it will create a circle that's at the origin that has a radius of 5. If we look at the syntax up here at the top, uh, we can see this is the command. It's going to ask for this variable first, this variable first. And then underneath that, it actually explains what that, uh, that is. Uh, and there's some other information here that you should pay attention to uh, when it's asking for you an array. Uh, an array is a set of something uh, versus a string, which is just a single uh, component. And there's a lot of literature on this, which I would encourage you guys to, to read as you go through this. Uh, so suffice to say, I'm just going to basically copy this, and I'm just going to paste it in here. And so I'm creating a new plane, and I'm going to identify that uh, as the origin here. And then I'm going to create a circle, and I'm going to replace this variable with the radius that we're going to be getting from the user. And I can just basically call that variable because it has been one, it's been dimensioned, and then it has been defined and given a value either by the user or as we go through this, it'll go through that. Uh, so this is going to create a circle now at the origin. And then we can do something clever is we can just go ahead and move that uh, geometry. So we can go and move objects. So then give, it's going to ask us for uh, some of things. We can just go ahead and hit Control-C, copy that in. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, this is where it's important to be paying attention to this. Right now, we just created a circle, but uh, it, it has no identifier, so there's no way to actually call that circle we just created, um, which isn't entirely true, but we can make our lives a whole lot simpler if we just give it a name, circle equals um, this add circle. And so, again, we have this algebraic equation. And so we can take the move object and identify the string as the circle. You can the array as, and I'm going to call it an array of 0, 0, 0. That should look familiar in terms of Cartesian coordinates. And then we're going to call, go ahead and call our origin as our second point. Uh, and then that should go ahead and run. So uh, just looking at this briefly, it looks like we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, first thing you do before you run any line of code is you want to save, because you never know if it's going to crash your computer. And we'll go ahead and save that. And we'll just run this. And you can see where we have an error in here. Uh, we've done something that it doesn't really like. And what it does is we violated the syntax here. It actually needs this to be in parentheses since we're creating an equation uh, for this. Let's save that again. And again, we have an error on this. And we again violated the syntax because we provided parentheses when we didn't need to. All right, so we'll just say enter for the radius. You can see that's prompting us up at the top here. Here, enter. And where's the origin? We can define that right there. And it flashed really quick. But if you look, we actually created a circle right around there. And if I turn on my snaps here, there's our center point. And if I dimension from there to there, you can see that our radius is appropriate. Uh, so that's our first, uh, it's a really, really basic script, but then it's a really, really simple setup.